Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to explain what the Fibonacci sequence is, why it is so special, and then we're going to write a program to calculate the ith number in the Fibonacci sequence using the iterative solution, the recursive solution, and also memoization. And don't worry if you don't know any of those, I will explain them all. So the Fibonacci sequence is a sequence where every number is the sum of the two previous numbers. So for example, if you take a look at the number 8, we can see that 8 is the result of adding 3 and 5 together. Now, if you look at 21, it is the same thing. We see that 21 is the sum of 8 and 13. Let's say that your math teacher wants you to find the 10th number in the Fibonacci sequence. So it's very easy. All we have to do is label these numbers first. So we're going to start at 0. This is the first number. This one is the second number, this one is the third number, this one is the fourth number, and so on, right? So we keep on going until we get to the number 10, and we see that the tenth number is actually 55. So the answer to this, the tenth number in the Fibonacci sequence, is the number 55. What if your teacher wants you to find the seventh number without providing you the numbers in the first place? Well, it's also very easy. And all you have to do is write out the labels first. So we start with 0, we have 1, we have 2, we have 3, we have 4, 5, 6, and 7. The next step is to write out 0 and 1 because the Fibonacci sequence starts with 0 and 1. Now, what to do next? Well, we take 0 plus 1 will give us 1. And then we take 1 plus 1 will give us 2. Then 1 plus 2 will give us 3. Then 2 plus 3 gives us 5, then 3 plus 5 gives us 8, and then 5 plus 8 gives us 13. And so the seventh Fibonacci number is going to be the number 13. Now I'm going to show you how the computer does it. So how does the computer find the fifth number in the sequence? Well, again, it is going to list out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as the labels. It's going to start with 0 and 1. Then the next step that the computer is going to do is it's going to put A and then B here. So pretend that there are two people, their names are A and B, and A and B are going to help us find the other numbers. We're also going to have one more person called I, and I is going to have 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, why 1, 2, 3, and 4? Well, it's because we want to find four more numbers. We want to find four more numbers. So I is going to say we need to find the first number here, and the second number here, the third number here, and then the fourth number right there. So I tells A and B, for the first number, find me the next number. So A says, okay, take A is 0 plus B, which is 1. So 0 plus 1 gives us 1. And this one is going to be, let's say it, it's C. So the first time we find the numbers, and then A is going to move up. So A moves up here. That's going to be A. And then B moves up here. And that's going to be B. So let's rewrite this. And then we're going to repeat this process. So I tells A and B, let's find the second number. And then A says, OK. So A is 1. B is also 1. So 1 plus 1 will give us the number 2. And for this number, we can say that this number is called C. A goes up. And then B moves up. So let's rewrite this. So we found the second number. For the third number, A and B are going to add each other again. So A is 1, B is 2. So 1 plus 2 will give us the number 3. Then 3 is going to be C. And then B moves to C. And then A moves to B. So let's rewrite this. So we found the third number. And how about the final number? Well, you guessed it. We take 2 plus 3 will give us 5, and this 5 is C, and then B moves to C, and then A moves to B. That's actually very important, so let's rewrite this. And we found the fourth number, and since I has completed all of these steps, then I tells A and B, okay, stop, we're done, and then B, it is B's job to return whatever number it is here. So the fifth number in the Fibonacci sequence will be the number 5. Let's write the code for the Fibonacci sequence. We define the Fibonacci sequence, and it takes in a parameter n. If the user accidentally puts in a negative number, we will assume that it's a positive number. So all we have to do is just turn it into a positive number. 
Remember, n is the label. So if the user wants the zeroth Fibonacci number, then we have to return zero. If the user wants the first Fibonacci number, then we return one. So let's do that. If n is equal to zero, we return zero. Else if n is equal to one, then we return one. What happens if they want, let's say the second or the third or the 999th number in the Fibonacci sequence, well, then we have to use a for loop. So else, we initialize a to be 0, remember, and then b is 1. So let's do that. So a is equal to 0, and then b is equal to 1. In our example, when n is 5, then we have i is 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the for loop would look something like this. For i is equal to 1, until i is less than n, i++. In Python, we write it like this. We add a and b together, so a plus b, and then we put that number into c. So we get c, which is equal to a plus b, and then what do we do next? Well, we move a and b up. a becomes b, and then b becomes c. After this entire for loop, we return b. So return b, because b has the value that we're looking for. Let's test our program. So let's find the first 10 numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. But of course, you can find the first 1 million numbers if you want to. And all you have to do is just change this number. And as you can see, the first 10 numbers in the Fibonacci sequence are 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55. And you can continue on, but it looks like our program works accordingly. Now, one thing to point out is that when we compute the seventh number and the fifth number, we always have to restart in the beginning. So remember, when we computed the fifth number, we have to restart at zero and one again, and this is slow. So there turns out to be a better way, a way that allows you to store these pre-computed numbers inside a file or something, and this technique is called memoization. Let me show you how memoization works, and it's also very easy. The way that memoization works is whenever we want to find a number in the sequence, we're going to store all of our results inside a list, right? So we have this list and currently it has zero and one, and we want to find three, the third number inside this sequence. So similar to before, we're going to have a character or a person called I, and this time I will start at two. Now why two? Because inside this list, there are two numbers so the length of this list is two so i is going to start at two and i will go up until we get to the number that we need to look for so starting at i is equal to two we look inside this list and we take the last two numbers so the last two numbers are zero and one we add them together so zero plus one gives us one and then we're going to extend this list so this time when we extend it we're going to put one right there so this two is finished, we're going to move on to the next number in the i, right? So when i is three, what do we do? Well, we look at this list. We take the last two numbers inside this list, which is one and one. We add them together, so one plus one gives us two. So we're going to put two here. And so that's it. We finish going through all of the numbers that i needs to go through, so we can close this list. Now finally, we want the third number in the sequence, so the third number is going to be number 2, and so the final answer is going to be the number 2. Let's find the sixth number. Now notice that we are going to reuse the results that we have computed before, and that's convenient because we don't have to recompute them anymore, right? So now i starts at 4. Now why 4? Because in this list, there are 4 numbers, or the length of this list is 4. So i starts at 4, it's going to go up until we reach this number, which is the number 6. We're going to start here at 4, so let's open this list. We take the last two numbers in the list. So the last two numbers are 1 and 2, we add them together. So 1 plus 2 will give us 3. And then we move on to number 5. Then we take the last two numbers inside this list. So the last two numbers are 2 and 3. We add them together, so 2 plus 3 gives us 5. We move up to the next number in i. Then we take the last two numbers inside this list, so 3 and 5. And 3 plus 5 gives us 8. We finish going through all the numbers in i, so we can now close this list right there. And since we want the 6 number, the 6 number is going to be 8, right? So the result of the 6 number inside the Fibonacci sequence is going to be the number 8. 
let's write the code. So we have a list and it's going to contain zero and one in the beginning. Then we define our function. And if the user accidentally puts in a negative number, we simply turn it into a positive number. Let's say this is our list and the user wants to find the second Fibonacci number. So this list has four numbers and we know for sure that the second number is number one. So all we have to do is return this number in the list. In other words, when n is less than the length of the list, we simply return the number that is in the list at that location. But what if the user wants to find the sixth number? And in this list, we don't have the sixth number in the sequence. Well, in that case, else, in our example, if n is 6, then i would be 4, 5, and 6, remember? So why 4? Well, that's because the list currently has 4 numbers. So i starts at 4, and then i goes up to n. And the for loop would look something like this. So for i is equal to length until i is less than n plus 1, i plus plus. In Python, we would write it like this. We take the last two numbers in the list and add them together. So that would be L at I minus one plus L at I minus two. And we can put the sum into, let's say, a variable called sum. Then we simply put the sum at the end of the list. So let's see, we have one and two. So one plus two is three. And then we put it at the end of the list. So that would be L dot append. We append into the list the sum. After this entire for loop, we would reach the end number that we want. This n, and we can see that the value is 8. So all we have to do is return the number 8. And that would be return l at n. Let's go ahead and run our program. As you can see, not only is our program calculating the if Fibonacci number, we can also see the list getting longer and longer each time. And the advantage of this is you can reuse this list and you can search for a number whenever you like. One last thing for today. I'm going to show you how to compute the ith number in the sequence using recursion. We want to find the fifth number so we can say f5. And what is f5 equal to? Well, it is equal to f4 plus f3 because that's the sum of the two previous numbers. And then f4 is going to be equal to what? f3 plus f2. Over here, f3 is equal to f2 plus f1. How about this? Well, you guessed it. Then F3 is F2 plus F1. F2 is F1 plus F0. And same thing for over here. When we get to F1 and F0, we stop here. We don't say, well, F0 is F negative 2 plus F negative 1. No, we don't do that. We stop at 1 and 0. And again, same thing for over here. There is an F2. So that's going to be F1 plus F0. We are almost done. So if you remember, the first two numbers in the sequence are 0 and 1. So at label 0, it's 0. At label 1, it is 1. At label 1, it is 1. At label 0, it's 0. So 1 plus 0 gives us 1. And here, label 1, so this is 1. And then we get 1 plus 1, which gives us 2. How do we compute this one? Well, we go down here, we see that 1 plus 0. So this is 1 plus 0, which gives us 1. And 2 plus 1 gives us 3. And then we have to find this one. And we're going down here. So f1 is going to be 1. f0 is 0. 1 plus 0 gives us 1. And f1 is 1. So 1 plus 1 gives us 2. And then 3 plus 2 is going to be 5. So the answer to the fifth number is going to be 5. Even though this recursive way works, it is not as fast as memoization. And that's basically because you see here, we have to compute F1 and F0 all over and over and over. So you see, we have to compute these guys and it's repetitive. So that's why it is not as fast as the iterative and the memoization method. Finally, let's write the recursive code. We know that F0 is 0 and then F1 is 1. That would be if n is equal to 0, we return 0. Else if n is equal to 1, we return 1. If n is bigger than 1 or 0, so let's say f2, then we know that f2 is f1 plus f0, right? That would be else return the Fibonacci number that is less than that by 1 plus the Fibonacci number that is less than the number n by 2. Let's test it. And as you can see, our program is producing the correct results. And that is basically it for today. In the next video, I will show you how to calculate the least common multiple and the greatest common divisor. 
So why do we need this? Well, when you simplify fractions or when you add or multiply or divide fractions, you need to find these two things. And I'm going to show you how to do it using recursion and how to do it using iterative solutions. So let me know if you guys found this video helpful in the comments down below. And if you haven't already, please also click the like and the subscribe button to buy me coffee for free. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video.